Thank you very much. This is actually our first uh, time publicly talking about this, so please bear with me. Um, my name is David Fauchier. Uh, I'm one of the two co-founders of Decusis. Decusis emerged out of a conversation between uh, Usama and, and Thibault, my co-founder, around what would happen if we were to do the family but for crypto, what would that look like? Um, what would be interesting? What would be difficult? What could we do differently? Um, and so we've spent the last few months really thinking about that and, and 2018 is really about building it, about launching it um, and trying to be additive to the crypto ecosystem. Um, you can really think of us uh, as a breakdown between knowledge, network and capital. Um, the knowledge side of things is really education. So one of the first things that we see is a huge amount of of money has flown into the space, a lot of it for very superficial reasons. No one has read a white paper. Uh, I gave a talk last night. Um, everyone had bought crypto. No one had read any white papers from start to finish. It's kind of worrying. Um, and people ask some 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 very worrying questions uh, quite often. Um, and so what we would like to do is to, to help uh, capital educate itself to learn about crypto, what it is, that these are protocols, not currencies. Um, and to try and, and, and help capital move into the space uh, in a responsible and, and educated way. Um, and then really, really to do kind of what the family did and, and democratize a lot of those learnings and, and pass those on and, and give them out for free, uh, do a lot of events and stuff like that. Um, the networking part of things is really uh, events like, like Hugo's. We, we hope to do something as good as this one day. Um, this is really cool. Um, we're going to be running a lot more kind of uh, pitch nights, um, events, dinners, podcasts from London, Paris, Berlin, New York, uh, possibly SF. Um, and so really just trying to bring the ecosystem together. It's very new. It's very fragmented. No one seems to really know each other that much um, except for over Reddit or Twitter. So we'd like to, to have some kind of human and face-to-face and -face interactions, the family style. Uh, and then the capital side of things is is what I do. Um, I'm the, so I'm the CEO of Decusis Capital. We are raising a fund of funds, which is a fund that invests in crypto funds only. So we don't actually invest in tokens themselves. Our job is to find the 10 best crypto funds in the world and put our money with them. Um, and so that's what I'm going to be building, I guess, over the next decade or so, and then helping out with the other stuff. Um, what we would like to do um, for the ecosystem for you guys is to be to to be additive um, first of all and to accelerate the mainstreaming of crypto over Europe to help people wherever we can whenever we can to make connections um, to point people in the right direction when they need something um, yeah so please if if there's anything you need um, let us know we'll do our best to help and and that's us thank you very much So I'm the founder and CEO of Herdius, and we've been working on Herdius since last June, all from Berlin from the start, from the get-go. Uh, and today I'm going to be presenting our own blockchain. Um, it's infrastructure level, and you will see it's more tailored toward the financial um, side of things, and, and the main core product is a decentralized exchange. Um, so first of all, I would like to skip to the three problems that are facing the blockchain world currently. Uh, the main problem is that blockchains are int not interoperable by nature. What that means is you cannot transfer seamlessly an asset from one blockchain to another. You have to go to a centralized exchange like Coinbase to do so. So that introduces a lot of uh, hassles from even data transfer or, or money transfer point of views. The second one is a lot of the decentralized exchanges run on top of Ethereum and smart contract, which is not a big problem, but um, there's actually a lot of transactions involved when making such a trade, so, so it's not very efficient to do so. Uh, the third one is, like I said, the efficiency problem, um, and you will see actually on the next slide how a traditional decentralized exchange works. Sorry for the cursor. Um, so currently in a decentralized exchange, there's actually four transactions happening in order to swap a token. So if I want to buy Augur tokens with my Ethereum, I have to transfer money to my wallet on, let's say, Ether Delta, then to a smart contract, then we draw it, etc. So that involves four transactions for a simple swap. Um, that's what happens in our case. Um, in the Herdius network, we exchange um, tokens in a bi-directional way, um, and there's actually only one transaction involved when doing so, and you can do it uh, straight out of your wallet. 
Um, so what is Herdius? Um, Herdius is a decentralized exchange that's blockchain agnostic and enables trade across all the different blockchains. Um, you should imagine it as a transaction layer that sits on top of all the blockchains. Now what that means is um, it's also future proof. Um, what I mean by that is you have a lot of new technologies that are based on graph graphs. Um, so, and a lot of current solutions such as Polkadot require uh, special communication channels to be set up with, let's say, the Bitcoin network for it to work uh, and to be able to trade. We solve everything on the private key level. We use something called the virtual wallet network. Um, so as long as a blockchain is based on, on private keys and cryptography, you can use it seamlessly on top of our chain and you can implement it. Um, it's also a back-end infrastructure, so a lot of times um, there's, behind being a decentralized exchange, it's also our own blockchain and our own blockchain infrastructure. It's not taken from Ethereum or for, forked from Bitcoin. Uh, so it's technically more scalable. Uh, to give you a short example, you can put more blocks on top of each other and thereby uh, fit additional information or transactions when possible. So if there's a surge in transactions happening in our network, we'll be able to handle it. Um, and since there's more blocks, it's also in a way parallelized mining and validation. Um, the Herdius token. So we are also doing an ICO uh, in, in Berlin. Um, and the Herdius token itself is kind of the empowering the whole system. So it's mainly used in our proof of stake based chain as um, staking currency, as collateral if you want to call it. If I'm sending money from A to B, then the two validators validating my transaction have to put down a collateral that's, that makes sure that they do not cheat and if they do so, that gets taken away from them. And for this, they earn fees. Um, it's, it's also inflation resistant. So there will not be more tokens that we release during an ICO, but if there's a surge, like take for Uber, for example, if there's a surge in demand for transactions happening in our network and there's not enough staking currency being locked in, what happens is we have a dynamic algorithm that adjusts how many new tokens are generated. So we are also looking at the inflation problem. Um, and obviously we also um, want to involve our token holders as much as possible. Um, and obviously we have proposals on what routes uh, the network takes. Um, and that's us, uh, follow us along. Uh, we are doing an ICO all organically and then we're gearing up for the whole process. Currently we are a team of seven, um, we have a bunch of legit, not, not blockchain uh, expert advisors, if you want to call them, coming in this week who um, will help us a lot with corporate projects in Germany and in Asia as well. Thanks a lot. Yeah, okay, hey, I'm uh, Thomas, I'm an investor at Cherry. Um, we're a 150 million euro fund um, investing in seed based in Berlin, but investing all over Europe. And we're obviously also dipping our toes in, into crypto, um, which means that we can do equity investments, but then potentially also participate in, in uh, token sales and token issues, um, which hopefully um, there are going to be opportunities where this can be done in a sensible, sensible way in the future. Um, yeah, so maybe uh, first question. So this is consumer facing, right? You You're just going to be a decentralized exchange and sort of you're tackling the same user as a Coinbase or are you more geared towards, towards financial institutions? So not only, yes, um, the, our main core product is a decentralized exchange, but there's a whole blockchain behind it that obviously has a lot of use cases. One, one example I can give you from the corporate background is you have this new um, MFID regulations that came in, in Europe, how you handle financial instruments. Um, we are in talks with one of the biggest auditors from the big four to implement it for them to do internal KYC on the blockchain. Um, uh, my view is that as long as it doesn't affect the decentralization of the network, then you can obviously partner with corporates or involve everyone. Uh, we are not sure yet how the token will be involved in if let's say a big bank comes in and uses our chain for backend infrastructure. Um, but there's a lot of different use cases we are, we are pushing and exploring. Um, so it, it's it's a decentralized exchange, yes, but um, we, there's also a lot of use cases potentially. Could you talk through a little bit about the token economics? 
Um, so we have 45 million tokens released first. Um, each token is priced 67 cents. What happens is, as I said, with the inflation, uh, we obviously did, you might be probably aware of, of Chris Perniski's token analysis, and we are actually trying to do one with a, with a Berlin-based university as well, like a new token framework. Um, so as I said, it's used as staking currency. Uh, what that means is it's like mining power in Bitcoin. Uh, so the more you have, the more transactions you can, you can put it down as collateral, lock it up, and you can verify transactions. Um, as far as it goes, the only thing we are looking into and are not sure from the token economy perspective is, is how we control inflation or what's going to be the utility. But um, once again, 45 million, um, I, I think it makes sense. Uh, so to say, uh, this crypto economic thing is so new. Um, we obviously did our calculations, but um, yeah, so it's it's all controlled dynamically. Um, and yeah, I believe for this kind of project, it's 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 um, a good number. Maybe to follow up on this, you said for a staking currency, is there going to be another currency that is sort of um, not packed to the to the transaction itself because you said in the beginning uh, if there's high demand in the network eventually you'll need to put up more for for the staking um, obviously or sometimes you run the risk that if you have a token that is also being speculated with it would harm sort of the network because it's not used for where it, it's harder to use it for for settling the transaction right is a is that something you're sort of decoupling or how does it work So that's something I forgot from the previous question. Um, obviously, the token we release is ERC20 for now, but our own blockchain it will not be compatible. But it does not make a difference because you have to lock in your tokens inside your wallet anyways. And if it's locked in inside our chain, it doesn't matter if it's Ethereum-based or the new next generation token that it will be on our system. What we do to avoid what you just brought up um, is, let's say there's 50 million dollars worth of transactions and there's only 10 million Herdius tokens being locked in. What happens then is the people who are holding and not participating get inflated. Um, so that's the control I mentioned. Um, obviously, we don't want that that someone just uses it as an investment and, and just holds and gets inflated for no reason. There's various ways you can participate with minimal effort by just blocking your currency in, uh, and not speculating or using it for other purposes. Uh, first things first, thank you to the family for inviting us. Um, also, thank you for everybody for coming and for everybody that pitched before me and after me. Um, overall, it's really exciting to see how many people show up to these events, whether they are experts or just people that are curious and want to learn. Uh, my name is Gonzalo. I'm the head of business development in Latin America for BrickBlock. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing. Basically, what we're doing is we're making it easier to invest. Plain and simple. Uh, we're making it easier to invest in things such as real estate and ETFs. Now, why is this such a big deal? Uh, let's say, for example, I live in Mexico, or I live somewhere in Latin America or somewhere in Africa. Um, I am constrained by the financial institutions that I live in. So let's say that, sorry. So let's say that, for example, I have $100, and I want to invest it in German real estate. Now, why would I want to do that? Well. Germany is a very stable country, uh, strong economy, and I'm able to be certain that nothing will happen to that investment and that I will receive positive income. Now, how do I do this today? Well, it's expensive, it takes time, I need particular connections, and the fees are going, are going to draw me back. And in our world, this should not be the case. Right? How come is it so easy for us to buy a cryptocurrency right now, but we can't buy it with the most traditional assets that exist? And that's what we're doing with BrickBlock. BrickBlock, we're making it easier for you to invest in these real life assets. What we're focusing on is real estate. The main reason is because our co-founder, Jacob, he built a career in real estate, and he thought that this would be the best application for the blockchain. ETFs, because much like real estate, ETFs are also very attractive if you're living in a different country and you want to invest in ETFs in other nations. And last but not least, crypto funds, 
Now, I know it seems like right now it's a bit of a bloodbath, but I can assure you that crypto funds are going to be very, very interesting in terms of diversifying your portfolio. Uh, exchange traded funds. Um, oh, man. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> uh, I'll explain. Okay. So why blockchain technology? Well, blockchain technology, as I just mentioned, you have complete global access anywhere in the world. Um, also, blockchain technology, it's quick, low transaction fees, it's safe, and high liquidity. And last but not least, also, you are able to choose the type of investment that you want in terms of size. You can invest $50 in a coin, $100, 10000 whatever you desire, and you are still reaping the benefits from uh, how that fund or how that asset grows. Now, I wanted to do something a little bit different than other pitch decks. Um, I want to show this video. Now, this video will be playing in the background. Oh, oh, no, no sound. Yeah. Um, the main reason is because we want to showcase that we are a product driven company. Uh, we, our first goal was to make sure that we had an alpha version out to the public, which means that tonight all of you can go home, download MetaMask, and you can check out our platform. Um, we have on our YouTube channel, as long as with our blog, we have instructions on how to access our platform. Now, our goals for us right now is that we are going to have the first real estate on the blockchain in Q1. Uh, we're still finalizing which property it's going to be, but it will be the first real estate in which everybody in this room will be able to invest in. Um, as well as also, we will be progressing with that, which means that once we're able to sell our first real estate, we will do a second ICO, and then we will be able to put other property on the blockchain. Property from real estate firms that we have, uh, we're close to making agreements in which they have an interest in what it's called basically the tokenization of assets, which is of real estate. Um, if, for those of you that don't know, MetaMask, basically it's the portal to the Ethereum network. Um, right now, this is the only way in which you'll be able to utilize our platform but we are working in ways to make, hopefully making it much easier to access our platform. Um, basically, this is just a test network, so it's just basically fake Ethereum that you'll be receiving just as a way to see it. So once, um, once you have full access of the platform, um, you will be able to basically see a mock-up of what our properties will look like. Right now, this video shows one, but if you go in today, you'll see that there'll be multiple uh, examples of different properties that you'll be able to invest in. Uh, not only through the properties, but also through the ETF funds as well. Um, all of this is uh, fully detailed. There's an audio in the video, so you'll be able to see and follow the steps little by little. And there will also be a blog with written descriptions on how to access this um, as well. Now, each property is going to have uh, specific information for that property, ranging from where the property is located, how big it is, and then in terms of the investment, the type of investment you'll be receiving, how much that investment will grow, and this is an example, and you will also have full information on who did the auditing. Uh, we are going to be working with Ernest Young, and they will be the ones doing all of the full audit for each property. Uh, now, once you invest, you will receive what's called POA tokens. These are uh, proof of asset tokens. Uh, plain and simple, this is just a way to prove that you invested in this, you invested in that. It's the economic representation of everything you invest in. Um, so here, we put the indication of what I want to invest in. Uh, it gives you a calculation of what that investment will be, and then uh, you submit, and you will have your proof of asset token. Uh, Right now, as this is the alpha, uh, we are going to be making some changes because right now it's not very user friendly. But I think what was important for us from day one is to show how this is going to look like. Um, you will also be able to see your own portfolio of the real estate you invest in, the ETF you invest in, along with the crypto uh, funds that you invest in um, as well. And, um, you know, I can tell you a little bit of the roadmap right now. We closed our ICO at the end of uh, last year. And then after closing our ICO, we focused on a couple of things. Number one, building our team. Number two, building partnerships with real estate firms. And number three, getting ready for having our platform live. After we have our platform live, we will have uh, another ICO. And then that's when things get really exciting for us. Uh, that's when we will add other properties on the blockchain. And then by Q3, we will have our first ETF. Uh, we are working alongside with a Mexican bank who is interested in utilizing our technology and our platform to have their ETFs. 
Uh, that's going to be one of our main strategies of growing in the Latin American market. Uh, and then at the very, very end of the year is when we will have our first crypto fund. Um, we're moving, we're moving slow because we want to move carefully. And in this space, it's important to move slow and move, make calculated uh, moves. Uh, last but not least, uh, we are looking for talent. Uh, right now, we're growing our team. Uh, we're looking from the tech side, uh, the marketing side, business development side, you name it. So if you're interested in what we're doing, please come talk to me. Uh, my CMO, Manuel, over there is also here and also to answer any questions you might have. And, uh, and yeah, and I hope you guys follow us and uh, you guys can be a part of uh, this exciting project we're building. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your pitch. Um, two questions. So uh, first question, say I'm in Brazil and I want to invest in real estate in Germany, right? How are you going to reduce the fees? Because I can see how a blockchain can facilitate maybe sort of cross country transaction. But in the end, you still have to buy a property here in Germany. And then you're dealing with basically the ledger of the German government, which is the Grundbuch and sort of nothing to mess with, or at least from a government's perspective. And I mean, those fees sort of like, you're not taking that away, right? And uh, second question, so just to understand it right, is this like crowd investing? So you buy a property and then other people invest in it, or can, can I use this to facilitate transaction in any property? Okay, um, fee structure, that was the first one. Um, actually, let me back up. So we don't own any of the property. Uh, we are just a platform. Basically, we're just a platform that connects the property with the potential, let's say, users, investors. Um, without getting too complicated, basically what we have done is we place that property from the real estate firms in a special purpose vehicle. Uh, this is off of Luxembourg. Um, we're also very lucky to work with DWF that's been helping us as well to uh, form all of these legal structure. Um, having said that, that's what allows us to tokenize these assets. Now, again, it's very important for us to mention that we do not own this prop these properties, any of the properties that are coming in. In terms of the fees, uh, given that we are uh, in the blockchain, the way we set it up is our fee structure is very low, 0.5% uh, uh, of the fee structure as well. Now, what you're investing in is you're not investing in the property in terms of, like, let's say I buy 50% of the property and then I'm pretty much on the property and maybe I can get the keys to go in and you know uh, Yeah, exactly, right. It's just that's the kind of investment you're, you're getting um, What was the third question? Okay Yeah, exactly. So it's set up for multiple people So let's say I mean right now we are our aim right now in terms of uh, the amount of people that participated in the ICO the amount of people that showed interest because we've done uh, survey research as well uh, We have about 3,000 individuals that are interested in have in investing in their first real estate And then what we estimate is that number is going to go up uh, because right now, like uh, I believe most blockchain companies, uh, they are in the proof of state uh, situation in which they want to prove that this works. So um, yeah, basically you can have 100 people invest, 1,000, you know, um, a large, you know, it just kind of depends. Also it depends on how big the property is going to be as well. Um, a lot of the real estate firms that we're uh, speaking with, uh, they have uh, big condominiums and big properties as well. Thank you. Um, so I, I get the concept of, of taking a flat, of putting it in an SPV in Luxembourg, of tokenizing that, of having tokens for it, of people buying those. Um, in terms of liquidity for them, are you able to list on exchanges? Is this not a security? Um, how does all of that work? Yeah, so we will be listed in exchanges. Um, we are a utility token. Uh, it's important also to mention. Uh, we can't say which uh, exchanges we're going to be listed in, but you know I can tell you that we are finalizing agreements as well. So yes, the tokens will be able to list, and also you'll be able to li uh, sell your share within our network as well, a network of investors in BrickBlock as well. Thank you. So I guess every one of you had done a survey in their studies or in their basically seen it in their Facebook feeds that somebody is searching for participants for surveys and usually these people or we uh, run into issues 
And for example, I studied strategic communication and planning and the past semesters I had to do roughly three to six for each research task. And at some point we didn't got enough participants and answers for these surveys or we had really like bad outcomes even though we made quality ones. And so I extended my like research radius into my working group. I work at Nakamoto, a Berlin-based uh, fintech crypto startup. Some of you know maybe. And we came to the idea that we need to create a platform better than the existing ones like SurveyMonkey, etc. Where where people or students basically participants in the network can um, answer each other surveys and get rewarded in tokens for doing so. The current issues on the market are basically that the existing platforms are too expensive for students and the free versions, they lack uh, some kind of basically quality and answers or there's not enough incentive to get people really to do your yeah, to answer your questions or to do your surveys. So uh, we are creating a network which is covered by a smart algorithm which rates every user or basically every participant, like here, where, for example, user A, this is just a draft, um, where user A who bought into the network or who just opened an account with a free amount of tokens and a survey said, okay, I need three answers um, answered, as three questions answered, and he pays a certain amount of money to a certain amount of tokens to the fee, amount 3.3, uh, 03. Uh, a part of the fee goes to a pool, and the other one to the maintenance or general server costs, etc., to the network to keep it stable. The algorithm rated uh, previous. Uh, previous answered surveys and the users basically. So because of that, the better rated user in this part, user C, gets the survey basically, and on top of that, a bonus because he answered it. The pa he answered the past 50 surveys very good in terms of um, like the algorithm, and now he gets or he receives the three tokens plus an incentive with potential and scaling up. So here's uh, like a little bit of the technology behind it because we are currently, are, we are working on, we got a click dummy ready, which you can test out later, where we got the whole system basically done. So you can just click through it and see how it works, but please for that, ask me later. And this is our roadmap, we are currently here where we got a lot of front-end stuff done. We are hiring, or we did a lot of recruiting in the past um, days, weeks, etc., and are roughly done with the beta around mid-spring, maybe May, maybe a little later, earlier. This is like the really current state of the roadmap. Um, as far as now, the representatives like, I'm the CEO in this part, we got Michael Geike from the Advanced Blockchain AG, who's an advisor role and helps us with the mathematicians and the finance stuff. We got Dujan, he's our UX guy, and we got a lot of power from Advanced Blockchain and Nakamoto with development and general small funding questions, etc. Um, Maike does our CMO. She is currently very into um, online marketing, etc. And this is like only a small part of the team. There is like three times as much people in the background currently working on it. And from now on, we do an ICO, as you saw in the roadmap, but we could, uh, the, uh, the ICO is basically to get it more fueled up, to get it faster done, because we want to be with a finished product end of this year, like late summer, maybe something like this. Yeah, and then thanks for your attention. <laughs> but I'm not done yet. Um, 
basically this was just a quick draft to show you hey this is what we are doing and i wanted to m basically ask you what you think about this project is is it something you really want because we think it is and do you get any additions which we should take care of or something like i don't know it's a community project it's built for the community from the community basically so if you got something to add go ahead or if you see some stuff which is stupid let me know So basically, we can go the easiest way. You just, um, like, three, one, five of you just ask me right away. Then if there are some insp uh, like in-depth questions, tech-wise or business-wise, you can just ask me here privately. Or if you are here from YouTube, you can send me a mail. You can see on our website or at changis at peak.io. And yeah, this is basically the way I would handle it for now. So this is a utility token, right? So wh why should I participate in your ICO? So basically, this is just one use case for this ecosystem. This is just uh, this was the student case, but we got in general usually more people in this business who are interested in getting surveys done instead of um, answering them. So big corporates, Amazon, I don't know, Adobe does a lot of. Uh, surveys, but they incentivize with a, I don't know, it's like a winning winning game. I think this is like they, they give out one GoPro if you participate in this uh, survey and then, yeah, you have a chance of, I don't know what, to win it. And um, so the, the big, um, one of the big cases is that the price will rise of the token, which get, gets adjusted, that you don't have to pay at one day um, five euros per answer basically in the fiat uh, terms and at the next day seven for the same amount of work we just scale it down or up very quickly and but the token as well, uh, the token as itself should grow and uh, should grow in wealth and we collect fees all the time small ones but this uh, shrinks the whole system basically the whole um, token system but this is don't nail me on it we are working with a lot of devs on it and this is like the raw draft or rough draft. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Um, so you, the origin of the idea, you, you identified a problem in the market that you were having. You thought of a better solution. What, what was the, the technical decision um, to use a, a token or a protocol? I, I don't know if it's a set of smart contracts or a native protocol, but... What is the the what went into the decision making between doing it that way or a traditional centralized sort of tech company? Um, since these similar systems exist in fiat terms, like there are Survey Monkey, Survey Hero, kind of that stuff, and these turned out that they don't pay very well. Actually, you have to do. I worked um, for Ipsos, a big researching company, um, in my in my high school time and it turned out that a lot of people really didn't saw an incentive and here you can like doing it on a token based model you can really scale up in the earnings you receive because the increase of wealth in one part and the other part is that people can participate from different parts of the world who like for example you wanted to you want to get uh, you want to research the um, Indian market so you you can with with the crypto like they had crypto trading pairs against the token called SEC maybe, and um, so people from multi currencies can participate in the whole system, and it can grow easily. So the borders between or for current uh, existing platforms are like lifted. So I will pitch my project. Um, hands up, I will also make a question. Hands up, who knows me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, nobody, <laughs> okay. <laughs> good, good, and I can introduce myself, I guess. Um, 
So I, I work with Ethereum uh, for the last three years and I built the things you see there, which is Ethereum wallet and uh, the Mist browser. Work also on Web3.js, which is the JavaScript library uh, developers use to interact with Ethereum. And I also initiated together with Vitalik the ERC20 token standard, which is the standard behind most of today's ICOs. And I also initiated another standard, uh, which is the blockchain identity standard ERC725. But today I'm here to talk about something else. I'm talking about Luxo, and that's uh, the project I will do as well. Um, so Luxo is a few more people than me, and a few more than here, uh, visible. Um, so quickly, blockchain, you probably all know that anyway, I guess. Everybody knows what the blockchain is. But it's basically, um, three things. It's a distributed network, peer-to-peer uh, -peer computer software, you know, where uh, sending transaction and synchronizing that. It's a consensus algorithm, which is in the core, which makes sure of how uh, transactions are gathered to the network. And this is, uh, for example, in proof of work, a competition. And uh, everything is verified. So that's actually a very crucial part. So this means you always can know the origin and the network knows who is uh, rightfully able to transfer uh, its money or executing smart contracts. And these three components, even though most of them are already existing since a long time, they create this nice thing we have today called the blockchain. And then you can do all kinds of cool things like, for example, executing smart contracts and sending money around over time. And now I talk about the fashion industry. Like, what is fashion? <laughs> that's, a, that's a topic which is probably not talked often uh, in, in, in such a setting here. But what is this fashion industry, or what is fashion actually? The interesting thing is, um, this is not really clicking often, okay. It's uniqueness. Um, so, in fashion, you basically had back then in France, you know, King Louis the Fourteenth. He made everybody wear nice dresses in his skirt and um, everybody kind of like uh, was uh, super into buying expensive dresses to show its status and so on and so on. This is actually the reason what really like brought the economy of France uh, up again because they didn't have that much colonies, they didn't have that, mu that much mines. But by making everybody excited about fashion and uniqueness and being special and so on, people bought a bunch of clothes and uh, the sewers and the tailors were suddenly very uh, demanded. We have the same today. So we have one property, which is uniqueness, right, in fashion. The second property is scarcity. And scarcity, for example, uh, certain bags are not produced very often. They're very expensive and people want to collect them. For example, the Chanel Timeless is the number one in the bag index of the Vestea Collective. And very important to everything else, it's history, right? So everything has basically uh, a history and the more important the history is, the more valuable and more interesting the objects get as well. And I would actually make this statement that blockchain and fashion have very much in common because they have this uniqueness, um, they have the scarcity and they also have the history. And this is kind of like what we here see created in the physical world, you know, what people actually do in the physical world. Um, blockchain does perfectly in the digital world and um, it creates these kind of like, um, um, you know, it makes that possible in the digital world. In the old world, yeah, where we can copy everything and in the blockchain world, we have this way of actually having unique items or having unique ownership and it's provable. So I would say uh, blockchain manifests in the digital realm what the fashion right did in the physical realm. Let me turn this here a little bit to me so I can see. Reading my, my own quote here. Um. <laughs> so this creates authenticity, right? And it creates also reachability because you can, I mean, and you as a crowd probably understand way more the possibilities and the potential of, uh, of blockchain, right? That you can reach, um, you can send tokens around, you can transfer ownership and all of these things. And it creates a huge amount of interoperability and automation, which was not really there before possible. So what we are going to create with Luxo 
is ta da da da. It's a blockchain, and it's the blockchain uh, for the fashion industry. We want to create an Ethereum-based blockchain for an industry, a so-called special-purpose chain. And um, basically, has two main reasons. One, in order to bring the old world into the new blockchain world, you have to do this step by step because they're not going to jump on a completely decentralized, completely uncontrolled network, which they don't understand yet. And second, uh, it also helps to uh, distribute the resources properly because our current blockchains are on a limit. Uh, we have right now 300 transactions per block around in Ethereum. It's kind of on the ma and its maximum. Same in, um, in Bitcoin. And if you distribute that load across different industry special purpose chains, make them interactable, that's a very good way of uh, offloading the, these resources over time until we have very scalable solutions, as we are still in the very beginning of the blockchain architecture. So, and we also uh, will do one use case, and you're hearing here like super early pitches. Um, so we want to basically uh, chipify handbags. So you put a chip in a handbag, and then you can, uh, out this handbag can authenticate itself and can prove that it owns the private key and the public key is registered on the blockchain from the brand who created it. And so you cannot uh, copy or fake this handbag anymore. And everybody can then just verify if it's an original or not. This is actually a huge problem for the fashion industry is in replicas and the blockchain solves that perfectly. Additionally, when you have that, you can also do super new uh, and cool things which you couldn't do before. You actually can reach the third and the fourth and even the 10th owner of the bag by giving him rewards of how long he actually owns a bag or giving him discount codes and all these kind of things. So, as you probably all know, the possibilities and the potential on blockchain is basically unlimited. And um, by having these two like entrance use cases, we can basically jumpstart and make people understand of why blockchain makes sense for actually every kind of industry. And in this case, we will do this for the fashion industry. So, we uh, are right now in the in the early stages of the project. We are also planning an ICO. In this case, as we start a blockchain, it's obviously uh, the token, the native token of the blockchain. And we do also plan a public ICO, um, probably in the next three, four, five months. And what I would like to do is a very fair ICO, something which I have not seen yet. <laughs> um, what I would like to do is make an ICO possible where people are able to withdraw their funds. And then over time, the money gets passed on to the Luxo project and paid out over time. And basically, you can always withdraw your funds at any point in time and put the tokens back for sale again. And obviously, as time goes by, let's say it's a two-year period, then after one year, you could only withdraw 50%. <coughs> and after three months, you can like... Uh, to withdraw 80% and after two years you cannot withdraw nothing anymore. This way basically you allow to only people to join who actually really believe in the project and also it allows the project to fail. So that if it does fail people don't lose everything and uh, let's say a failed team sits with a bunch of money which is can't use. So that's a very interesting new concept which I definitely want to uh, discuss publicly also with others, and there's a lot of people right now thinking about how to make uh, fair ICOs. And uh, I think that's a really good model, and I would like to see this happening and uh, how it works out. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, obviously, very cool to have an uh, early Ethereum developer here. I guess that's sort of rare. Um, since you've been in this world for quite some time and probably you've seen a lot, why is it that you choose this project as sort of the next thing for you to work on? So probably the, the main reason is my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, um, I'm, I'm very happy also the things I'm doing in the Ethereum space. So I'm, I'm continuing and working still on Web3.js and other projects. I'm still helping out and standardizing things and so on. Uh, my wife is obviously more the one who is into fashion. And I could like click back to it was the second person next to me. Um, but I also find it very interesting as I'm like speaking since more than two years on stages all the time. What I find very interesting is 
to see how the industry is evolving and actually looking and thinking where it's going. And I think industry blockchains and special purpose chains is actually the next step. It makes absolutely sense uh, to do and is a very good learning and a very good uh, way of like bringing companies into the decentralized mind space uh, and mindset. And uh, it just makes sense. It's an industry which is obviously very, very new to that. So it's not like, you know, telling banks about blockchain. They probably already heard about it. But it makes sense for basically every industry. And the use cases are unlimited. Maybe just like one follow up. Do you do you see this going beyond fashion then? Because, I mean, the use case validating authenticity for a second, third time use and so on is obviously very relevant for other industries as well, right? So absolutely. I mean, the, the, it is something you can do basically do everywhere. I mean, on top of that, you can do supply chain tracking and you can create all kind of new business models, uh, which were like unthinkable before. Once you have also these pieces that you have a di digital self of the items, you can then create things which we don't know right now. I mean, who have, would have thought that 10 years ago or 15 years ago, people like watch uh, images of random things in their phones all day long. You know, Instagram was kind of, it's kind of a weird thing, you know, you just like look through photos all the time. And, <laughs> you know, it does not really do a big purpose otherwise, but uh, it works and people do and use it. So I would say, yes, you can definitely do this kind of authentication and uh, verification uh, of kind of like physical to digital for, for every industry. And it will happen certainly for almost everything. Um, but I think having an industry specific approach is better as because like no, nobody knows exactly what will be the next standard and nobody wants to have this extremely broad like um, do, do, does the metal industry wants to work with the fashion industry on the same uh, item tracking system or not you know it's kind of you have to approach them one by one and it works also better in order to um, prevent scalability as a problem. Yeah, so it's it's very cool to hear you you having done some thinking around fair ICOs. Um, I was wondering if there are any other uh, ideas that you guys came up with or came across um, in the same sort of making ICOs fairer uh, sort of discussion. If there are any interest, other interesting ideas. So there's actually Ether Research or ETH Research, uh, a website. Uh, it's a it's a forum, I think. Uh, where people are actually discussing right now different ICOs. Actually, Vitalik came up with an idea of like a DAO ICO where people can vote on milestones and so on. I think like what I uh, what, what I'm proposing here is rather more simple. It's not like not not this complicated thing that it actually uh, needs you to vote and so on and so on. It's a time based thing, and you can always opt out in a way. And um, yeah, I mean, right now we have the problem that basically people get a lot of money and kind of like already it takes the incentive away away for them to, to really succeed with the project because they kind of like made their exit in a way already at that point in time. And uh, I think we see now, and also what is very important is that the industry is self-regulating, right? That we come up with proposals and solutions which make sense rather than like letting other people like, tell us what we should do. And then it becomes very like restricted and so on. Uh, my name is Chimale. <clears throat> I have a question about, you said, talking about fairness, you know, and fashion. I don't, by the way, know why you chose fashion except your wife, because this is a luxurious thing that you're doing for a luxury industry. But as we know, fashion has also a dark side. The production of these bugs, uh, you know, is used in a way, exploitation of cheap labor, and, you know, in countries that are already struggling. So how about would your solution be able to say that if this bag was produced in a fair way, if the people who produce it were paid, you know, in a just way? I mean, as it is a smart content based blockchain, you can build all kind of use cases. And uh, the thing is, once you put like, once you make these companies operate on a public network in kind of like a public setting, it forces transparency like the world is moving towards open source and transparency uh, basically in every level and um, I mean you can simply make a supply chain tracking or like a provenance system where it's certified and so in the future so if you certify something in the future you actually have to prove it right rather than today you just put a sticker 
in the future it is a signed message from whoever actually certified it or even the the farmers and the creators uh, themselves and then you know that it's true and it's not like a whatever sticker which which could be just put there so yeah you can actually do with digital signatures all kind of uh, verification and transparency things which you couldn't do before and certainly it will move more more towards sustainable uh, fashion and and being transparent of where things are produced and how I was reading end of 2015 about um, Everledger. Um, how do you compare yourself to other provenance tracking um, startups? So Everledger, also provenance, um, is not a startup. What they are doing is they kind of like provide a API and, and a software service and they write things on different blockchains. We are building, we are in initiating, jump-starting that economy. So kind of like we go to the brands and make everybody come uh, on the, uh, to the table and work on the same platform. So that's the main key. Look, so one, uh, this, this is just a one use case and it's a very clear one and it makes sense and it does work and it solves the problem, but this is just the first one. And the important thing is if you want to create any kind of economy that you have an open or as open as possible system, which uh, um, creates this kind of innovation, right? So you want people to come and build stuff and come up with new concepts and new things. So the others, they're just doing this one solution focus and we actually start a, a special purpose industry blockchain. I'm gonna ask, oh shit, I'm gonna ask the pitcher to come on stage with me. Yeah, Balas, Gonzalo, Changes, I'm good at names. Uh, and we're gonna do, I mean, like, it's just a few minutes, then we can all, you know, go buy beers and sell bitcoins. We just, just, um, I'm gonna ask them to pitch in uh, just like a tweet. Well, now we have 280 characters, but just like, you know, short sentence, one so you can remember, and then we will do like the whole applause thing. <laughs> so smart surveys and guaranteed answers. Uh, blockchain for the fashion industry. Easier way to globally invest. A future-proof decentralized exchange. And so now I'm gonna ask you to just like, again, make some noise for your favorite one. But I mean like, don't make like a big silence for the ones that you don't root for, you know? Just like, we still want to have a good vibe and know like, you know. So, you know, clap and say, but for the one that you really like, just like kill the vibe. Just like, you know, jump onto the sky, not so far because we are slow. And then we will have some good vibes. So first, project. And I remember the name. Chance. No, but like a survey. Survey echo. Three, two, one. So. Okay. Sure. Second project, Luxo. Three, two, one. A bit better. Brick block. Three, two, one. And last, heard you three, two, one, go. Okay, okay. So I think I think we have like the final line with two projects. I've heard like a couple of ones. I would agree that it's you and you just come on in, step in. And now we're gonna do like, but I mean, I don't want to have any hesitation, you know. So if you really, really like a project, again, jump to the floor. If you don't like it too much, just like clap a little bit, like with the hands and with the feet and that's it. Okay, now again, let's concentrate so we have a clear winner in, in beers. <laughs> Look, so three, two, one. Okay. Hair juice, three, two, one. And now we go with the prize because that's, you know, like we have like a real handcrafted prize with a peach again because it's a peach event. Yeah. And it's going to go to Hair Juice. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now we're going to have some music, some music, and we can all go down straight, straight away to get some beers. Thank you very much for having come. See you next time. Good luck on the lead.